good morning from the Arctic Blast! It was so warm last night. Made for some pretty good sleep up until around... Midnight. Midnight. Around midnight, things started to go a little bit sideways. Not because of the airstream or the furnace, because of the no. weather outside. It was loud. Because, I mean, well, yeah. we live in a tin can. Around 2 to 2.30 a.m., we lost all power. I wondered if maybe the breaker flipped. We've been having quite a few power surges tonight, with a lot of power surges. And I am so thankful that we invested in a really good surge protector. So if you don't have a surge protector, this is one of the many reasons why you should. So we went through about 15% of our propane last night, which means we have plenty for the next 24 hours or so, which is how long they expect for it to stay below freezing. We're gonna be doing things around the Airstream today that don't necessarily require power because we didn't fill up our generators with gas. Looking back, that's yeah. probably something we would do in the future. Not probably. It's definitely something we would do in the future and really should have known better for, but. Shame on us, hindsight's 2020. Hopefully we'll have power soon. I don't know, fingers crossed. Apparently a lot of people in Texas right now don't have power, so that's yeah. probably not gonna happen. We're just gonna treat today as a day to get some stuff done around the Airstream inside, and maybe we'll get brave and go make snow angels in a little bit. Lois and Clark seem just fine in their new snowy environment, as does our piggy who must be named. Well, the inevitable has happened. Since we're out of power, my laptop has officially died. Guess that means we're gonna be doing more uh, old school work. Maybe like reading a book. Fingers crossed that the power will turn on tomorrow. It's warmed up a bit. It is now 25 degrees. Nope. Wow, it, it literally just updated right in front of you. Now it says 23 degrees. It's on the way down again. Um, which means the floor is super cold. I'm just wearing ankle braces, makeshift foot warmer. <sighs> you do what you gotta do when it's cold. We have been running off of our fresh water tank and our furnace for just over 24 hours. And so far I'd say we're pretty much crushing it. We've only spent about 20% of our fresh water tank and we have only used 40% of one of our propane tanks, so we should be in the clear because we only have about 24 hours left of this horaciously cold freezing weather. So, feeling pretty good. Not to mention, our furnace system has kept the airstream at 60 degrees pretty much steadily for the last 24 hours, so we're not miserable. We've been inside all day, which is something that we knew we should expect, with winter camping because, well, quite frankly, we don't own ski gear, but we're going stir crazy. So we are going to bundle up, the sunset looks beautiful, and freeze our tails off walking on the beach to see if we can survive at least a 10 minute walk. Be careful, this is icy. It is really cold, but it is so pretty. stupid for not bringing a mask. Not because we need to social, socially distance myself. Nope, we're myself. good there. Just to warm my face. <laughs> I can't feel it. But the sunset, check this out. Look at that behind me. How beautiful is that? And the ocean has calmed significantly since this morning. Earlier, the whole beach was just white. It was white snow rolling right onto the ocean. We better not walk too far. We have to walk back. <laughs> No more than 15 minutes outside. I can't feel my fingers, toes, or pretty much anything. It's legitimately that cold. 
It's really cold. After freezing our butts off on the beach, we decided to call my aunt and uncle, who are pro campers, and up until about 24 hours before, had been in a beach only 30 minutes south of us. <sighs> Welcome back in. They're going, well, hell, we can't get out of here. Right. And we can't get gas. We can't get propane. What are we going to do? And we're going, oh, shit. I'm so glad we came. <laughs> a lot of people in Gal on Galveston Island are bailing out of their RV parks and trying to go to a hotel. I believe it. I think we're in pretty decent shape as it stands right now, but I mean, I don't think we could do this for a week. Like we would, <laughs> if it if that second round comes through, we're gonna have to really revisit our plan. I think. Hey, look, we're we're old pros. We, we're not tough enough to deal with a week of that bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> At this point, you already know that we screwed up and we didn't fill the truck tank up. That would have been smart too. It's still a three quarters, so that's good. But we also didn't fill up fuel in the generators, so we have no power. Lauren's uncle told us that some people at the campground were backing up the truck close enough to connect, and that was a way to recharge the batteries. Um, at this point, since our batteries are running low and the sun is going down, so we're not gonna have solar, I'm just gonna give it a shot and see what happens. Ah, so close. That ought to do it. Okay, the hypothesis is that maybe I can use the truck to charge the uh, onboard batteries. That's at least a plan. Do you know what degree it is outside? Like, too cold degree. It's too cold degree right now. Which, whatever that number is. Which for a Floridian is anything below 60, so just remember that. I'm back to filming inside the Airstream, because it's that freaking gold. Unfortunately, this experiment doesn't seem to have worked, or I don't know what the heck I'm doing. So I'm just gonna kill this experiment, go back outside and turn off the truck, and just call it an evening. After Daniel shut off the truck, we figured the most logical thing to do was make something warm for dinner. Mmm, freaking nailed that dish. Specifically thanks to a tip that somebody sent me about sauteing the vegetables before I had all the ingredients. That was super helpful. Look how yummy. Spoon cheers. Mm. Delicious. We made a big boo boo. Why <clears throat> weren't we smart enough to think about getting gas in the truck and the generators? So, honestly, how I think we got here is that one of the conversations that we had before and while we were prepping for winter camping is that we pretty much just said, well, no big deal about the generators. If we run out of power, if the power goes out, We'll just run to the gas station down the road because there is one really close to here. But the problem is, is that if you don't have power and if the whole town doesn't have power, you can't get gas. So super important to note, make sure you get gas for your generators because it won't freeze and you would really enjoy having them so that you don't have to live off flashlights like we are. But. Worst things have happened. You know what the sad part is? Hmm. I can hear all the other generators running. Just not ours. Really should've got gas. <laughs> really should've got gas, yeah. Since we're out of power, that means Netflix and chill is officially off of the table. So, we're going to good old fashioned books. There's absolutely nothing wrong with. Legitimately earlier in the day, one of the other campers came up to us we noticed you guys are the only ones without a running generator. Are you okay? <laughs> so nice. I mean, that's a camping community for you. But I had to tell him, it's okay. We have propane. We're warm. Our hearts are warm. Our hearts are very warm. But we have no power. <laughs> they weren't prepared. It just is what it is. But now we'll know a lot more, which is awesome. Bonus points for every single light in the Sarah stream being LED because they consume such a small amount of power that you can have like a hundred of these things and it's no big deal. So we at least have 
LED lights. Simple Life is a good one. All right, it's about two o'clock in the morning, maybe 2.30 at this point. I woke up because it was getting cold and when we went to feel the furnace system, we realized it wasn't working anymore. Apparently, we have officially used all of our battery and so that generator thing that we thought wasn't that big of a deal really is. So thankfully we do have gas left in one of our generators. So <laughs> we've got to try to get that figured out because now our tank heaters aren't working. The furnace system is not working and as you can see, <sighs> you can now see our breath in the airstream. So we are starting up the truck and we are going to use it as our home base because it will stay warm and we are going to see if we can't get a generator running. Keep your fingers crossed for us because at this point it's like 21 degrees outside. And it's 40 degrees inside. So this is going to suck. If you're winter camping, freaking fill up your generators with gas and use them. Okay, we're going to go learn from that mistake. Step one, trying to see if we can get the truck to at least do something for charging the Airstream. Yes, we tried this last night, but this would be the fastest fix. We are hoping and praying that the truck will somehow miraculously help to charge the batteries enough to turn the Aldi system on because we lost all power and I mean, we were already asking for a lot. As soon as the sun went down, we didn't have solar. We didn't have anything at that point. It's cold. So we're basically using the truck as our warming up point, which is actually working out really, really nicely because there are seat warmers and real heat in here, so that's a win. So we're gonna give it probably about like five more minutes and then I'm gonna run inside and see if looking our truck did up to the Airstream did anything and if not, we're going to have to face the cold again and get the generators out and try to make that work. Miraculously, hooking up the truck this time seems to be giving the Airstream power, but we have a new problem. Our Aldi heating system is showing another error. So under this bench is where our Aldi system is, AKA the heater. running now. I mean, at least that's got to be something good. Something's happening. <laughs> I'm not sure what's happening, but I mean, no alarms are going off. It's a win. Yeah. Surprisingly, it wasn't that hard. That just reset everything. Damn, we said we're good with technology, right? <laughs> if you're not sure about something, you just turn it off and then turn it back. We're back in the truck because we think we got the Aldi system working. My feet are freezing, so I'm just putting them on the seat warmer and it feels so good. But we're gonna give it 15 minutes or so. The inside temp in the airstream right now is 40. The outside temp is dropped to 19. And we're hoping when we go back and check in the airstream, it's gonna be above 40. That's the goal. Even 41 would be a win because it just keeps decreasing. I think when we woke up, it was 45 degrees inside the airstream and it's dropped to 40. Just maybe half an hour's time. So that's not a good sign. It's getting cold. It's not getting cold. It is cold. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that is just an added bonus. Really have to get a portable compressor. As we try to stay warm in the truck and wait, we notice that our neighbor is using their truck similarly. Maybe this will work? It's officially been 20 minutes. So we are keeping our fingers crossed and hoping that it's warmer in the airstream. We're getting tired. It is now 3.30 a.m. So we've been up for about an hour and a half trying to fix this. Yep, not what we were hoping for. It's still 40 degrees. I mean, it's still maybe 40 in here, but 
it dropped from 45 to 40 in like 30 minutes and now it's at least maintaining at 40 and I can start to feel some warmth coming out of the vents. That's a good sign. It may just take a really long time to heat this thing. Um, I don't really know, but at least there's some warmer air coming out of the vents, which is great. So the good news is that the truck is giving us enough power to get the Aldi system running again. We can feel warm air coming out of it. But the biggest problem is that we can't let the truck run all night. So we're gonna finally break out those generators at 3.30 a.m. in the morning. Only one of the generators has a little bit of fuel left and that's because the last time we ran both of the generators, one of them kicked off in the middle of the night. We didn't notice. So it has a little bit of gas left. And we're thinking a little bit of gas is better than no gas. Which is luck, because it's really cold. At this point, it was way too cold to film outside. So we moved as fast as we could, but after about 15 minutes, we were back inside the Airstream. <sighs> okay, so we got the dog bone out. We got the thing that connects the generators, but all of our locks are frozen shut. So we couldn't get the lock off of the surge protector that's plugged into the the power tower there. It's literally like frozen to the tower. And we couldn't get the back of the truck open. So the good news is that our Aldi system is showing that it's already 44 in here now. So we're up four degrees. So our game plan is to keep our obnoxious amount of layers of clothes on, get back in bed and try to get some sleep and just take shifts and wake up every hour to make sure the truck is running That's and what make sure do. we're not freezing to death. So yeah. huh, we're definitely going to be figuring out the generators in the morning. The good news is it's already 4 a.m. So there's only about two and a half hours before the sun will start coming up and things will start getting warmer. So huh, can't say sweet dreams is probably in the future, but uh, at least we're not outside. The good news is that when the sun comes up, the solar panels will start to recharge the batteries. I don't think I like winter camping. And don't ever winter camp without generators. Okay, night guys. Good morning. We're so tired after last night. The good news is the temperatures outside have gotten above freezing. So we're doing a couple things. One of the big reasons we decided to stay here in Surfside is that my little sister only lives about 15 minutes away. It's got like 15 bridges between here and there. So those have been iced over for the last two days so we couldn't get there. But since it's above freezing, we're gonna try to get there. And there are gas stations along the way. So our plan is to stop at the first gas station that has power, get what we need for our generators, go to Leslie, my sister's house, take a hot shower, charge our electronics, relax for a little bit, and then come back here tonight, get the generator set up, and then voila, we will be boondocking with skill again. And maybe take a nap in between there, cause well, being up from two to like, 6 a.m. last night was pretty rough. So, here we go. Did you check and make sure everything was unhooked? Yeah. Looks like we're good to go. Disconnected everything. Might have done it in the middle of the night. It was a little delirious. I'm not exactly sure when that happened, but we're ready to venture out into the Arctic tundra. The fact that I have so much experience driving in snow and ice, being from Florida, you know, and all, um, it's gonna be like driving Miss Dayton. We're gonna drive real slow. We're gonna make this enjoyable and safe, and we're gonna get there in one piece. This is why we have not come over to my sister's house yet. This bridge definitely looks like it was crazy iced over yesterday. First gas station we're passing obviously doesn't have any power until by the sign. 
Thankfully, we made it safely to my little sister's house and immediately went to bed. Thank goodness she had power because many across Texas weren't that lucky. Way before we wanted them to, our alarms went off. We are going on a hunt to find gas for the generators and diesel for the truck. Okay, so we think there's hope for the HEB gas station, but no one's there. So we think they have power, but they're just out of gas. Hmm. Off to Kroger. We were wondering why one lane was moving and the other one wasn't. And then we finally realized off in the distance we can see a gas station and this is legitimately the line for gas. I'm not exactly sure how many cars are at the gas station because we can't see that far ahead, but I'd imagine it's a lot. Um, on a positive note, it means they have gas. Hopefully they still have gas by the time we get there. I don't necessarily know if it'll be diesel or not, but at this point we just need gas for generators and that'll be a win. 30 minutes later, this is what we find when we arrive. They literally just ran out of all gas. The guy's out there putting the covers on the pumps. All right, so straight ahead over there, you can see there's another gas station, so we're keeping our fingers crossed. It looks like oh, they're still tight. pumping gas. We noticed there's a line of trucks, and I can only imagine that that's probably the diesel line, which would be a bonus for us if we can fill up on both diesel and regular fuel. So I'm basically just gonna get to the back of the truck line. And there we are. Good news, we're making progress. We're so close. We're literally the next vehicle at the pump. And it just seems like the lines keep getting longer and longer longer. Okay, come on. Big money. While that's filling, we're going to take the caps off of the generator so we can get those filled as soon as this is done. Now, this one's still full, so I just have to fill this one, and then we should be good to go. Our saviors. Is it coming out? Yeah. We got gas! Yay! <laughs> I don't think I've ever been this excited to get gas in my entire life. <laughs> I feel like I just won the lottery. <laughs> I don't know if you can see. Yeah, this line is crazy. They're definitely gonna run out of gas. After spending a little more time at my sister's house, we needed to get back to the Airstream to set up the generators, which we've only done once before. Thankfully, that was a couple of weeks ago when we were boondocking in the bayou of Louisiana. That video comes out next week, so subscribe and hit the bell for notifications because that's another cluster figuring out how to work these darn things first time around. But thankfully, it wasn't freezing then. Little Piggy's doing good. Piggy, who needs a name? First off, mission accomplished. Huge reason for celebration. The generators are up and running, both of them. Secondly, because we don't necessarily know how long the generators will last, no clue. I'm gonna turn off all lights that are unnecessary, that aren't essential lights. They're just going off. We're gonna keep it on the slow burn as long as we possibly can. So as it stands right now, it is precisely 10 o'clock. We'll see how long these generators last. And now it's time for bed. So the internet isn't working which really super sucks because it means we lost a day of work today and we'll have to probably go into Lake Jackson tomorrow or go to my sister's house to work. So from a standpoint of working on the road, winter camping, probably a no-go. But there are all signs pointing to a peaceful and relaxing night of sleep now that the generators are working. So we're keeping our fingers. This is insane from a standpoint of Texas's normal weather, and it's not really getting better. 
without power. That means there's no internet and we don't really have great cell phone service out here anymore. We need more supplies. We're running out of water. We were able to secure some gas yesterday. It got us roughly eight hours and 45 minutes of power. But unfortunately, we're out of gas again. And after the mad dash yesterday to get gas, we don't exactly know what it's gonna look like today. Ideally, I'll be able to find some gas canister so we can go longer than one night. The reality is I don't think any of us expected this to last as long as it has. It's just turned into really kind of a worst case scenario with the power grid here. A lot of our friends and family have reached out. They're like, why don't you just fly back to Florida? Like, this is awful. Even though this is not like the sexy, beautiful, like Instagram perfect version of RV life, we're learning so much and so fast. So because of that, we are sticking it out and just working on, you know, getting it done. As if our winter saga couldn't get any more dramatic, Lake Jackson and the surrounding areas are now on a boiling water requirement due to sitting water and the power outages, etc. So our problem with just not having quite as much drinking water as we would like has become a bigger problem. Apparently, it takes about two hours right now to stand in line to get to Walmart. So we're going to try to go pick up supplies and fingers crossed we will get to stay in our home tonight. But all things considered, at this point, it's officially questionable. After passing gas station after gas station that was either out of power or out of gas, including the one we got lucky at yesterday, we decided to start with the grocery supplies. Back at it again. This time, the grocery store looked quite different. There were aisles and aisles of empty shelves. And of course, only the fancy bottled water was left. Shocker, all my vegan stuff is still in play. Despite the line, we were impressed by how quickly it actually moved. Before we knew it, we had most of what we had came for and we're off on the gas hunt again. As it stands right now, we've passed three to four different gas stations that were all either out of power or out of gas. So fingers crossed we actually find some gas because we're gonna need it. We're expecting some lower temperatures over the next few nights that's gonna dip back into the 20s. Well, we found a gas station that's open. It's a Bucky's, Bucky's to the rescue. There's another line, but we will take it. Can't complain about gas. Round two for Gas Trip Adventures. Never quite sure what gas to get, so I always went with mid grade, but that just ran out. So now I'm going with regular because I take what I can get. The good news is that Lauren's sister had a five gallon tank for us, and these generators are only taking a little over a gallon, which is good, maybe even less. With gas in the generators and a five gallon tank, we both felt a huge sense of relief. Power and running water felt like they may never return, but. We had what we needed to stay warm, fed, and hydrated. We worked at my sister's during the days and stayed in the Airstream at night to make sure nothing froze. But then something wonderful happened. Just got back to the Airstream. We're expecting another freezing night with temperatures in the 30s, low 30s, not ideal. Uh, I came back to hook up the generators and lo and behold, Lights! So we have power, which is super exciting. I have not told Lauren yet. I think I'm gonna surprise her. She thinks I came back to just set up the generators. I left her at her sister's house because honestly, it's just been super stressful and I figured more time she could spend with her family, the better. The plan is to clean up a little bit. She's gonna come back to a warm, cozy, and clean Airstream. It'll be the ultimate surprise. And just like that, I've got the place clean. One of the many advantages to a very small space is that it doesn't take that long to clean. Can't wait to show Lauren. And as an added bonus, I've got a bottle of champagne here. We bought this a few days ago and we said to ourselves, when we get past this craziness, we're gonna drink a bottle of champagne and celebrate. Granted, we could lose power tonight, tomorrow night, and not have it for days, weeks, but you really have to take a moment every time there's a win in your life and celebrate it. Hey, babe, I'm sorry I missed your call. My phone was on silent. Is that okay? 
Yeah, yeah, no, it's okay. I'm headed back now. Everything's, I've been running on the generator. Uh-huh. It's hoping for some good news, but it doesn't always work out that way. What do you mean? I'm sorry, I'm confused. Well, I thought there could be a chance when we got out there that the power would be back on, but you know, it just oh. doesn't always work out that way. I mean, I didn't have any hopes for that. Yeah. Well, I'll see you in like 10. That sounds good. Okay, drive safe. Okay, bye. Bye. What do you think's been the most difficult part of today's? Um, knowing that we needed to get work done and that's not happening. That's stressful. Being cold is stressful. Not getting normal sleep is stressful. Um, winter camping is kind of lame. There's seriously power out here. It looks like it, doesn't it? It's probably... Yeah, this is... We... Was it like this when you came over the bridge? We might seriously have power tonight. How does that make you feel? Uh, elated. A little skeptical because it's been since Sunday, but... I mean, there's power in one of these places. And we're only like maybe three minutes from the airstream. It looks like our campground has power and that's pretty comical because you've already set up the generators. It's being proactive. Yes, they definitely have power. <laughs> Winning! So is there water here too and you're teasing me about this whole thing? Oh my goodness, light! Oh, and it's clean in here? Oh my goodness. This is like heaven! <laughs> You're so cute, boo. And I was really worried that like you were really tired or something. It looks so pretty in here. <laughs> we have power. <laughs> oh my god, that's so exciting. <laughs> oh my heavens. I have one last surprise. Ooh la la. Time to celebrate. Are we celebrating winter camping being over? We're celebrating the win. Oh, even if we only have power for one night, this is still really wonderful. Cheers. Cheers. To conquering winter camping. Yeah. I don't know if we conquered it. Let's not do that again. <laughs> <laughs> is there a way to get this airstream to the US Virgin Islands? <laughs> or it's warmer. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. The power would only last a few more hours, and running water wouldn't return for three more days. But we had officially made it past the worst of it. Winter camping in the Texas freeze sure as hell wasn't something we had planned on or wanted to do, but it taught us a lot about ourselves and about our Airstream home. We figure if we can make it through that and still be smiling at the end of it, we'll be all right.